Welcome, Investigator. Evil is on the rise. Crime is escalating. Our mission is to eliminate the crime by exposing evil, examine why it manifests, and highlight the brave souls that confront it every day. Join us as we work together to bring justice to every victim. Welcome to All Things Crime. Here's your host, Jared Bradley. Hey, everybody. It's Jared. Welcome to another episode of All Things Crime. I'm back home now, and uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate everybody's uh, comments and well wishes from last uh, last week's episode uh, when I was up in Salmon, Idaho, dealing with my mom's estate. I just uh, just can't tell you how much I appreciate all of you listeners and and viewers out there. So while we're at it, please take a moment to subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't never miss an episode. Uh, both on the YouTube channel as well as wherever you listen to your podcasts. So, uh, again, thank you for all your your kind words, and uh, you guys are just awesome. So that's uh, that's why I do this. This is it's really an honor just to to be the host of of all things crime and uh, to be able to talk to you guys every week. So, but I wanted to get into something a little more fun. So it's the day after Halloween, and I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, my kids love Halloween. And now I'm, I'm more of a Thanksgiving guy because obviously I love to gorge myself. And um, so I'm glad we're into November. But I have to tell you a little bit about uh, Halloween because, you know, it's just so fun watching kids just and, and this is, you know, all the way to teenagers. But, you know, I, I think it's also a great opportunity for even adults to act like kids because, I mean, how many pictures have you seen on different social media platforms, Instagram and Facebook and all the others of, you know, people at work, you know, the, the costumes and, uh, I, you know, it's everywhere from, you know, vampires all the way down to aliens and, you know, who knows? I mean, the creativity of some of these costumes is absolutely amazing. I saw the athletic director at uh, BYU where I went, uh, was dressed up as Yoda and, uh, <laughs> This guy's just amazing, uh, Tom Homo. He's uh, he's every year he comes up with something, and if you haven't seen it, you definitely need to look up Tom Homo on. Uh, I don't know where it would be listed, but the Instagram, for example, and see his costume because it was amazing. I mean, for a world class athlete uh, to be look look like that is just fantastic. But personally, my kids, one was dressed up as a Oompa Loompa, another one being captured by an alien. And then the third one, oh, I can't even remember the name of it, but it's like one of these spooky little doctor types that has the, the long uh, mask and that covers his face. And um, but just awesome, awesome stuff. And, you know, they went out and they got just piles of, of candy and, they, you know, they were all excited when they came back. And my kids love to sit down after they get back from trick or treating and uh, negotiate and trade and they'll figure out who likes what kind of candy. and trade for each other and you know it's just it's just a really really fun time and they they all well not all of them but uh two of my kids are are in junior high and so they didn't do it they they did wear their costumes but the one that's still in elementary school they had this big parade and my wife was able to go to that and video you know these all these kids parading around showing their parents all the different costumes and uh, you know just a lot a lot of fun and so, of course, I had to have my dad tax, you know, whenever uh, the kids come home, you know, we got to pay our taxes, right? And the dad tax is, uh, I, I pick what, a uh, couple of things, at least from each from each bag or, or each bowl of candy that uh, that I want, because after all, I'm the controlling entity here. And so I had to have my dad tax on their candy, which, of course, uh, brought all sorts of fun as well. But the reason I bring this up is because it's so amazing to just watch the just the innocence and the fun and the laughter and just the amazing just every single year it's the same and everybody loves halloween that you know and just the, just the general excitement and the innocence of of the day well i want to contrast that and this is where the uh, the the crime part comes in i want to contrast that with what i have seen is is really a disturbing trend and that, and that is basically that well let me just pose this question to you why do you think so many nefarious entities 
are targeting our children. And here's what I mean. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about child abuse, like in homes and things like that. And that is horrible. And, you know, but that's, that's another subject. I have uh, four kids that are adopted. Three of them out of the, my three boys, we adopted out of the uh, foster care system. And the abuse that those guys, those little boys went through, the, like the twins were uh, two and a half, basically, and the, the youngest was one when we got them. And the abuse that they had gone through wasn't so much physical abuse as it was just neglect. One of the twins was severely malnourished. Another one had never really left his, his crib. And the third one, well, all of them basically had like no communication skills because their parents and, and older siblings, well, they were basically being raised by a 10-year-old. And so outside of physical needs, what could a 10-year-old really provide? And it's, it's basically nothing, especially with three demanding little boys. And, uh, you know, the mom was just uh, an alcoholic and totally, um, totally neglected them. And, and that type of scenario is all too common. And it's, it's tragic because of the damage that it does to, to the kids. And, um, you know, it's taken a lot of years of really serious therapy and, and loving. And my wife has just been absolutely fantastic in being able to, to really help, especially when I'm, you know, traveling so much and things that, that my wife has taken up that bar and just, you know, put so much time and effort into these boys that, they have basically caught up, and but it's taken a long time and a ton of effort to reverse and, you know, all the negative aspects of just a couple of years of abuse. So as horrible as that is, and, and it, you know, that's not even physical abuse. Physical abuse just adds a whole nother layer onto that. But as tragic as that is, I think there's other things that are going on that are more subtle in, in some ways and actually in many ways more dangerous. And Here's what I mean. For example, and and the not so subtle ways are the obvious, like human and sex trafficking, for example. And part of this is anybody that allows us to happen, I think, is just on a different level. And we, we have to, as responsible adults and people that care about a functioning society and reducing crime, we have to be more cognizant of this and I think speak out more. So I'll challenge all of you right now that are listening to this to if you see something like that and or, or if you see somebody that's allowing something like that, uh, stand up. We have to stand up and we have to say something about it because, for example, what's happening down at our southern border is criminal. And I've been down there. I've been down to Panama to see the Darien Gap and where, you know, all the migrants, if you will, are coming across there. And many of them are children. But the when the sex traffickers and the human traffickers get a hold of them, then that's when it really starts to, to get ugly. Because like coming through the Darien Gap, for example, a lot of kids that are coming through there with their adults are raped, they're robbed, they're put through all sorts of traumatic events that just shouldn't be happening. And, you know, there's um, down at the southern border, if you haven't heard about this, there's what they call rape trees and what those are there's trees down there and they'll hang the panties or the bras of all the rape victims. And a lot of those are children. And, uh, these rape trees are basically twofold. One, they, they, they throw out a lot of fear because of the actual uh, event that's happening to these kids. But then it's also taunting the border patrol that they're basically saying, you know, there's nothing you can do. And they, they, they'll be right across the river and they know that the border patrol, uh, because that's another country, the border patrol can't do anything about it. And yet they are just flaunting how evil and, and just ne absolutely nefarious. These, these guys are with, with these rape trees, but I I'm really honored. We're working with, um, OUR, which is a great organization that is focused on, reducing the amount of violence and, you know, violence against both children and uh, women. And also the, just the incredible things that they do 
with, you know, different sting operations on, you know, some of these sex traffickers and, uh, and people like that. But, you know, another thing is um, a lot of these, a lot of the gangs have learned that because minors don't have as, as harsh of sentences, they're actually using a lot of these minor, a lot of minors to commit the crimes that the, the gang organization wants to have happen. I don't know if it's robbery or whatever, but they're specifically using minors and children to commit these crimes so that the gang members that are over 18 don't get, uh, don't get hammered as much. And, you know, again, that's, that's causing a massive amount of damage, uh, not only to the kids, but also to just society in general. And, you know, then, um, you start getting into the really more subtle things. And, you know, I think, uh, introducing, for example, introducing porn into school libraries and allowing kids, you know, eight years old to be stumbling on this stuff. And, and some teachers are even, you know, assigning this as, and and maybe they consider it age appropriate, but I don't, uh, personally, I know in my childhood, it ended way too fast. And as a dad of five kids, I want to protect my children as much as I possibly can. And frankly, you know, I have uh, their 12, my 12 year old boys now. I don't want them reading that stuff. You know, why rob kids of their innocence? Because ultimately, what is going to happen, and we see this over and over, a lot of the, especially the, the sexually deviant criminals, you know, people that are committing uh, sex crimes, were abused and neglected and uh, exposed to this kind of stuff when they were children. And you have to know that a lot of these uh, people that are that are causing a lot of the crime now, especially a lot of these sexual assaults and things like that, they were the kids that were exposed to porn early. They were sexually abused themselves. And, they, you know, this we have to break this trend. So part of that is to Try to help these kids stay innocent for as long as they possibly can. You know, allowing kids to make decisions, adult decisions, permanent decisions, when they are still adolescents and they're still into that impulse stage. You know, science has proven that logic doesn't fully develop until mid-20s. And so, you know, there's a reason that we don't allow kids to rent cars kids to get tattoos, you know, do all sorts of, um, of, of major things. They can't, you know, a lot of them can't drive till they're 16. You know, there's a reason for that is because their, their impulse is so overpowering that, and their logic hasn't fully taken effect yet. So why are we allowing them to make life altering decisions? And we, we just frankly shouldn't. And you know, we're already in trouble enough because the last couple of years, uh, our response really to uh, the COVID and, and the pandemic was was horrible. And we overreacted on a lot of areas. And the, the kids, it's showing now that the data is showing that many of uh, the children that are growing, especially in the way well, this, uh, this, these stats are just scary. But our response to the pandemic has set us back 20 years. And in, in educating kids and, and moving them forward and being able to graduate and then move on to hopefully being a productive life. And, and if to be that far behind in just a matter of, a, you know, a couple of years is if that doesn't scare you, it should. But bottom line is, uh, you know, adults have to be adults and kids need to be allowed to be kids. And, you know, there's a there's a reason that. One of the most quoted scriptures in in the Bible is when Christ was uh, he'd been preaching all day. He was I, mean, I believe it's in Mark. And he he basically said, you know, his, his apostles were pushing uh, some of the people away that wanted Christ to bless their children. And the apostles were like, uh, no, he, he can't be disturbed now. He's exhausted. And Christ overheard that. And he said, you know, do not suffer the little children to uh, come unto me. And so he basically said, bring them here. And he, he took the time, despite being exhausted, he took the time to bless them because the children were so precious to him. 
And they say, he said, that is the children are the makeup of the kingdom of God. And that's because they're innocent. They're believing. They are just the most precious in God's eyes. And who are we to not believe that same thing? It's, um, and it also says anyone who harms a child, uh, it'd be better for them to have a millstone wrapped around their neck and thrown into the ocean. So not sure if you know what a millstone is, but uh, my understanding is it's that massive stone that's uh, in, in windmills. And as the windmill turns, it, uh, it crushes the grain against that millstone. So, you know, I don't know, a couple of tons, several tons to have that thing wrapped around your neck and thrown in the ocean. Yeah, you're going to, it's bye-bye time. So anyway, my, my message today, folks, is we have to not only stop crime that's occurring now, but we also have to stop future crime. And the way to do that is to not only make sure your kids are being educated properly, meaning that they're learning how to read, they're learning how to write. Their education and schooling are two very different things. Schooling is one thing. You know, schooling is just physically being there and, uh, you know, and going through the motions. Education is when you're learning and you can get educated in lots of different ways. But the key is allow the kids to get educated, not only about the, you know, the reading and writing and arithmetic, but also, you know, we should, as, as parents and adults, should be teaching these kids how to be responsible, not abusing them. And anybody that would abuse a child, I think we, we need to have that exact same attitude that Christ does, that maybe not physically, but we need to be throwing millstones around these people and, and stopping them from injuring these children. So, you know, let's, let's go back to the attitude of Halloween where it's joyous and it's laughter and we're having a good time. And most importantly, we're letting kids be kids. So that, that's my message for today. I hope that makes sense, guys. And um, just wanted to, again, say appreciate uh, all of you. And I hope, um, uh, hope you have a great day and a great week. All right. Talk to you later. Thanks for joining us. Your attention today brings us one step closer to exposing and eliminating the evil that brings crime to our communities. Hit subscribe and share this episode. Together, we will bring justice to every victim.